In reply, Mike Sabin. Mr Speaker, no one is a fan of retrospective legislation and the last, it is a last resort and is reflective of council failure. Unfortunately, it is required and the only workable uh, way to remedy irregularities and errors that were avoidable uh, but nonetheless occurred. This is not an unprecedented situation. In recent weeks, we've seen another example of, of it with the uh, Tasman District Council Bill. In summary, the bill looks to uh, correct the number of irregularities and errors mostly to do with rating uh, made by the Kuiper District Council. These procedural and substantive irregularities, setting rates and associated uh, documentation go back many years, sir. Most of the rates uh, that the bill attends to have been paid. Ratepayers have received services for which they were set, but nonetheless these need to be validated once and for all so the Kuiper can move forward with certainty. The bill proposes to validate the rates set and assessed by the Council for 2006-13 and associated penalties to treat all rate payments as received by Council as having been done so lawfully. Uh, um, and to authorise Council to recover any part of the rates and penalties for those years that remain unpaid. It seeks to address the actions and omissions related to continuation of the Council's 2006 development um, contributions policy, the late adoption of the 2011-12 annual report and its 2012-22 LTP, and the conduct of the Council's special consultative uh, procedure for 2012-22 long-term plan. Sir, it's been said that the $30 million decision to expand the sewage scheme is not subject to this bill. All of the matters for which validation is sought could have been struck in a way that was consistent with the Act and provided for, um, if they, uh, which would have resulted, sir, in the same amounts being invoiced um, uh, that would have occurred if they had, hadn't got this process wrong. The Council accepts that it made mistakes and it needs Parliament support to correct the situation, uh, but it is, um, uh, this will not absolve anyone of responsibility, sir, for the decisions that have led to these errors, and I would not support this legislation if that was the case. I have made it also very clear to the Commissioners that I, and I want to put it on, rec on the record of this House, sir, that accountability is just as important in giving ratepayers certainty uh, when they have been so woefully let down by those they elected to govern their district and the systems that should have provided the necessary checks and balances to avoid this situation. The Office of the Auditor-General is conducting an inquiry into the Mangawai Wastewater Scheme uh, and, that, uh, and the time taken is understandably frustrating to ratepayers. Questions must be answered as to what her role or the, office, uh, the, the role of her office and that of Audit New Zealand has played in the failures of this Council. The independent inquiry into Audit New Zealand must answer very serious questions, sir, as to the apparent failure of that authority to respond to the Council with such long-standing and deep-seated compliance and other fundamental financial mismanagement issues. How was it that this Council could still get clean audits year after year? If, this count, if the Council gets it wrong, then ratepayers must be able to rely on the systems that sit above it to stop the rot, sir. If they are shown not to have done this where they should have, then they must accept responsibility and they must be held to account. Huge questions also need answering as to the operating relationship between former CEO Jack McKercher and the elected members of Council. The due diligence processes and the relationship between Mr. Con Mr. Kircher, uh, McKercher, consultants and contractors. I want to assure ratepayers uh, and that as a former detective I share your concerns and no stone will be left unturned by me in seeking justice and accountability for those ratepayers. And I have entrusted in the Commissioners and I will support the Commissioners in the pursuit of this. Many have levelled significant, significant criticism at me for, not being, uh, for being willing to sponsor this bill and, on, and that I am kowtowing to the powers that be by doing so. I want to say to them, sir, I am doing this because it is what I feel I need to do for my constituents, not anyone else. Uh, and I will accept responsibility for that decision. Um, it is not an easy decision to have made. It would be much easier just to turn and walk away, sir. But constituents should rightly expect that, they, that their local MP does not do that. Um, that it doesn't shy away from the hard stuff. They should rightly expect that I will stand my ground and I will fight for them, sir. And I'm saying on the record of this House today, I have been doing that and I will continue to do that for them. This matter deserves and needs the full scrutiny of this Parliament and I encourage my colleagues to give it just that. If elements in this bill don't pass the test, then so be it, sir. At least this process will have come to finality. 
This bill is part of a number of activities that are underway to help restore the Kuiper district. It is not the only part, but it's a very important part, sir, and I hope that my colleagues on the Select Committee give it that level of attention. With regret, sir, I commend this bill to the House. The debate has now concluded, so the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Party vote. The clerk will conduct the party vote. Order. New Zealand National. 59 in favour. New Zealand Labour. 33 in favour. Green Party. New Zealand First. 7 in favour. Māori Party. 3 opposed. Mana. Act New Zealand. 1 in favour. United Future. 1 in favour. Brendan Horan. 1 in favour. A point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, there's been a number of speakers' rulings which I haven't looked up because it's been quite a long time since they've uh, been used because they were mainly used in the time when there was physical voting. Uh, but there's an old rule in this House that uh, vote follows voice uh, and we appear to have had some sort of error now. It may be with this new party vote system that we've had for the last 20 years or so uh, that that no longer applies. But I. Uh, Mr Speaker, it used to be the case that there was an obligation on members uh, to vote according, vote physically with the way that they voted with their voices. Uh, it's my understanding that that doesn't apply under the party vote and people charged with a proxy have the right to call that vote. Uh, I, didn't, I must confess I didn't hear the member when I initially declared the vote, which might have led to the confusion, but members that are charged with a proxy to vote alternatively have the right to call a party vote. So I'll now declare the results and the ayes are... Uh, uh, Mr Speaker, I, I, I sort of hate to, to push this too hard, but my understanding, Mr Speaker, uh, is that people can only call for a party vote if they disagree with the way that you have ruled. And, and, and in fact, you ruled uh, that the ayes have it. Yeah, and, and I've already confessed to the fact that I didn't hear the member calling and so that was in part my error and probably in part the error of the person for not being loud and robust. Let's learn from the experience. I'll now declare the, declare the vote. And the ayes are 116, the noes are four, the motion is agreed to. Kaipara District Council validation of rates and other matters bill first reading. The question is that the Kaipara District validation of rates and other matters bill be considered by the Local Government and Environment Committee. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Uh, call on members' order of the day number one. Prohibition of gang insignia and government premises bill committee stage.